Hey, YouTube is Matt with One Reptiles, and today is going to be a really exciting video. This is something that you guys have asked for, you guys have said you wanted, so I'm going to show it. Now, before we get to today's topic, I want to share this with you. Of course, this is our... Man, you like destroyed that area. This is our Suma Boy right here. Uh, so let Kurt just kind of bask in that glory see how well he's growing he's going to be breeding for us in 2020 so there'll be a lot of mahogany stuff available from olympus reptiles i am really excited now there is a reason in today's video why i got that snake out to show you because come on fit back in your cage there he goes because today's video is all about record keeping which means we don't get to show very many snakes i wanted to show you something cool before we got started all right it's on to record keeping and we have my good old purple computer so what this is going to be so we're going to start with now i have removed some things off of here to protect people's information so a lot of times i have customers who bought what and you know what they paid everything else in here i kind of took that off just to show the video but you'll want to keep track of that too if you can uh but obviously people you know i don't want to show it to the world so here's how we keep records this is from 2017, and I'll show you. We, we change as we learn. So 2017 breeding. So what we would do is have our pair info. Apollo to Demeter. That tells me who my snakes are, Apollo. So my bumblebee, Demeter, is a pastel. So obviously it's a killer bee clutch. It'll tell me when they laid eggs. In this case, it was March 10th, 2017. That was our first clutch of the year. They're all serial numbered. 2017-0101. So the number we use would be 2017-0101 or just 17-0101. Uh, and that tells us, you know, Clutch, our year, clutch, baby. So these all start with 17, all start with 01, and you got 1 through 10. It also tells us what the morph was. We have a spider, pastel, pastel, B, normal, pastel, B, B, spider, B. Yeah, not so bad, huh? But, you know, it's not in there. No super pastels or killer bees. So we kind of sucked on that one. And But you can kind of go through and you can kind of see everything we did. You know, we had some Mystic or Mohos. We had... Uh, bunch of head pies, some of those question marks, those question marks are those weird pastel looking ones, you know, we have one we logged as dead in egg, it died in the egg, unfortunately, so we do log that, and then the cool thing is when we finished out the year, you know, do do do, you can see, we did pretty good, we did pretty good, not so bad, right, egg died short to being laid, oh, one never appeared to be fertilized, that sucked, that sucked, uh, it shows we did 96 eggs with an average of 6.4 uh, eggs per clutch. Okay, we had 14. That was our fertile eggs. We had 14 slugs, which gives us a total of 111 eggs, an average of 7.4 eggs per clutch, and an 86% fertility rate. Not too shabby. What I didn't save in there is I did run the numbers. We did have a 95% alive rate. So then what we did. As again, we always learn. So you always are trying to improve on your craft. So in 18, you'll see a lot of the same thing. You know, uh, so you've got, you know, the clutch number. Of course, March 17th, 2018. So this is about getting that time of year, right? We're about a month away from starting to see some of those. We have seen a few ovulations coming, so we're good. Uh, you know, Mojave, Normal, GHI, kind of the same type of thing. But one thing we did do is in 18... We had, uh, let's see here, where'd that clutch go, Kurt? We had this clutch here, which we haven't done the update on yet. And you know, we did lose one baby, 18, 17, 07. But you could see it was a pinstripe to banana, and the data ended up being a pastel lesser. So we had to do some learning, you know, and we had to start logging pairings from now on, or we will, that uh, didn't take. So if we pair and we log that pairing, if it didn't take, that way we'll know for retained sperm down the road. Uh, kind of neat. And I know, yeah. So we had to learn. Sucks, but you have to. But then, too, we did something different with our numbers. You can see we had 121 healthy eggs. We just logged it better. Average healthy per clutch is 7.11. I can see it's an improvement on last year. We produced six slugs. Eh. Average total egg 7.47. Our slug rate, we actually have a percentage on that, is 5%. Live baby's hatch would be 115% live hatched, uh, considering only fertile eggs is 95%. Percent live hatched of total eggs, and that includes the slugs, is 90%. So uh, when you hear say 95% live hatched, we are talking about fertile eggs. They're not counting slugs in that number, but that is what we kind of learned to do to log. So that 
is that aspect of record keeping on how we log each and every year, where the serial number comes from, how we maintain our numbers, how we know what we're doing. It also allows us to go and say, okay, you know, we talk about it's okay to, you know, inbreed to a certain extent, but let's say we're getting ready to breed an animal 170805. Okay, that's our clips female. And let's say it's down the road and I'm like, man, that would be a cool pairing. Let's pair that to 170603, our zebra bee male. We're not doing that, but just bear with me. And I wanted to see, I could go back in 2017, if this was five years down the road, and I could look and see who the parents were. So if I know 1706, doo -doo -doo -doo, of course I'd always remember who Zeus's parents were. 1706, there's my zebra bee, 170603. It was Pandora, Pastel, Exanthic, to Hades, and Exanthic, Pastel. Well, how related is that to my clip female? Let's look at 1708. Looks like I could use the same parents. It's like it's a calico to a blitz. Okay, cool. I know they're completely unrelated. Awesome. I'm good to go. I don't have to worry about it as a timed out cross frame like that. Another thing it allows us to do is let's say we had a really odd snake. And we're like, what the hell is that? For example, this year we are breeding a Eris 160101. Now, I know her breeding, and she is in glow. She is probably going to have babies for us this year. She was a product of a champagne bred to a calico. But if I had babies come out of there, and I was like, what in the world? This thing looks really odd. I could go back and look at that pairing and be like, oh, there was calico possible in that. Or, okay, now I know why this looks the way it does. It actually does have calico and prove it out. But by being able to go back and see the parents and be able to find that information easy off of a serial number makes my life way easier. Not today, because we're only a few years in, right? But what if we're not talking 2016, 17, 18, and 19? What if this is 2026? I need to go back and track lineage. I can sit down and do it. It may not be fun, but I can sit down and track lineage by going back and seeing what the breed parents have been over the years. So... That brings us to another thing that happened. Since we had that one surprise clutch, we had to figure out who the dad was based on the animals we have, I didn't really want to do that again. So what we learned to do was we write all the pairings on the cages. So I know what male is going where. So then if this year, let's say uh, this lesser pastel, I'll show her to you. Let's say she doesn't produce. You ain't gonna produce one, girly? I bet you will. Let's just see how she's looking. Let's say this year she doesn't go. And I'm like, oh, that's a bummer. I was hoping you would. Oh, look, she's turning pink. We're going to go into shed. I want to take a look at you. We'll see how we do. Let's say she doesn't go. This is her first year of breeding. And we're like, oh, man, that sucks. I'm going to log her pairing. I'm just going to log it as no eggs. And I'm still going to log lesser pastel to GHI. Why? Well, because then let's say in next year, I decide to breed that lesser pastel to... I don't know. Banana. Banana black pastel. Hell yeah, we're doing that. Boom, it's going on. And all of a sudden, some really weird looking shit pops out. I'm like, the hell? I can look back, see who was previously bred last year, help to identify retained sperm, and give me a better idea of what's going on with my animals. So I can tell my customer, hey, the reason this looks like this is I'm, I'm pretty certain it's retained sperm from the GHI male. That's why there's a GHI in there, and this is what's going on. Or... Or we get something really weird and we start doing some uh, retained sperm and the new father both in the clutch with a dual sired clutch and something's looking on. I want to go back and see why does the snake look so oh, I bet that's retained sperm from the previous GHI. And that's why I have this GHI lesser looking thing and everything else is looking like banana. So there are some aspects of why we choose to do that and why we're going to log those pairings. Now that comes from a learning experience. So I'm telling you guys, so if you are like me and you want to do something like this, you can go ahead and start doing that, learning from my bonehead mistakes and not have to make them yourself. How cool is that? Or you can do it your own damn way. It's fine by me too. If you have your own way that works for you, that's great. All right, Kurt, anything you want to add about record keeping? Record keeping. Yeah. How long can they hold sperm retain? Oh, God. Uh, you know, the longest report I read, I think, was seven years. I wouldn't really worry about that happening very often, and that was a snake that wasn't being bred and just popped out eggs. Uh, it is a chance of parthenogenesis too, but um, it was like in a classroom somewhere. So they can hold it for quite a while. Quite a while. 
But uh, I think you usually have to worry about a year or two at most. You know, truth be told, you're not going to have something from five years ago. But if we had that one in a million clutch, could we go back through now and see? Sure, we could. We could go back through and try to identify it. It'd be kind of fun and kind of a kind of a cool problem to have. Anything else? No. Nope. All right, guys. Thanks for watching, and we will see you next week.